Today I'm going to be talking about super eggs. Now by super egg I don't mean something like um, this, which is just a very big egg. I mean something that's shaped more like this. It's kind of an oval shape uh, with straightish sides. The key thing about a super egg is that it comes from uh, another mathematical shape called a super ellipse. So today it's all going to be about super eggs and super ellipses. A surface of revolution is a three-dimensional shape obtained by spinning a 2D shape about an axis. For instance, a sphere is the surface of revolution you get by spinning a circle around its diameter. Of all surfaces of revolution, none is more surprising than the super egg, which was named and popularized by Danish poet and scientist Piet Heyen. A super egg comes from the rotation of a certain kind of super ellipse a shape that's midway between an ordinary ellipse and a rounded rectangle. The equation of a run-of-the-mill ellipse is x over a squared plus y over b squared equals 1, where a is half the length of the ellipse's longest axis and b is the half length of its shortest axis. In the 19th century, French mathematician Gabriel Lame studied the family of curves produced by the more general equation the absolute value of x over a to the n plus the absolute value of y over b to the n equals 1, where absolute value is just the unsigned value and n is bigger than 0. Not surprisingly, the family became known as Lame curves. The ellipse is just the Lame curve for which n equals 2. A four-pointed star shape called an asteroid is the result when n equals 2 over 3. For all values of n greater than 2, Lame curves are known as superellipses. The super egg is the surface of revolution of the superellipse for which n equals 2.5 and a over b equals 6 over 5. Its strangeness becomes apparent only when it's made into a real physical object formed, for example, out of wood. As Pete Hyen pointed out, a super egg stood on either end has a peculiar and surprising stability, so much so that playing with one is a rather satisfying experience. In the 1960s, super eggs made of metal, wood and other materials began to be sold as novelties, and in particular small solid steel ones were marketed as executive toys. Today, from Pete Hines' own website, you can order complete with a tasteful grey leather bag a stainless steel super egg whose soft curves combined with the cold steel make it perfect for de-stressing play and fidgeting. Or you may care to visit the world's largest super egg made of steel and aluminium and weighing one tonne which was placed outside Kelvin Hall in Glasgow in 1971 to honour Hein's appearance as a speaker there. The history of the super egg goes back to 1959 when city planners in Stockholm were looking to complete a redesign of Sergel's Torg, Sergel's Square, the most central of Stockholm's public squares. It was decided to finish the redesign with a fountain surrounding a monument around which traffic would flow in a roundabout. For the shape of the fountain, the chief designer of the project consulted his friend, Pete Hyen, who took less than a minute to come up with a continuously varying bending shape, the superlipse, generated by the equation I mentioned earlier. Later, the ingenious Hyen spung his special superlipse into the solid which, sold as a popular novelty item, proved for him to be a golden egg. The fame of the superlips, however, didn't end with its use as a traffic island in the Swedish capital. It became the iconic shape of Scandinavian tables of that era, and so of contemporary tables in general in the 1960s. When negotiators from opposing sides in the Vietnam War couldn't agree on the shape of a table for their meeting in Paris, they finally settled on the superlips. On a grander scale, it was chosen as the form of the main stadium for the 1968 Olympic Games in Mexico City. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you again next time.